before I invite our children down. I want to thank everybody who volunteered for Trunk or Treat. It was massive. Another minister said they had 900 people show up, and I said, well, we had 901. <laughs> so uh, it, was, it really was. It was a fantastic day. A lot of people donated candy who couldn't set up trunks. A lot of people set up trunks for the first time. I want to thank all of you for welcoming so many kids to this uh, community. Get the word out about First Christian and some upcoming cool stuff that we have. Speaking of cool stuff that we have, um, Next Tuesday is our normally our election day paintball trip. We take the youth to go play paintball in Bowling Green on the day that they are off. We have run into a lot of transportation issues. There is a national recall on 15 passenger vans that has affected every church in the area and all the rental agencies. So if you have a flexible schedule and would like to drive some wonderful God-fearing youth to paintball in Bowling Green, <laughs> Middle school and high school, if you, have, if you were able to do that, I would love to give you some information about it. We will cover, of course, your gas or your mileage. We will buy your snacks and food and water. We might be able to get a lunch in, but we could use a few people because uh, right now, if we don't have more cars, we're only going to be able to take about 11 or 12 students, and we usually have about 20. So uh, the reason I'm saying this now to everyone is I'm going to have to do a background check on anybody who drives our students. So if you think you could do that, please let me know either today or tomorrow so that I could get those started so that we have one back for, every, for everyone. Because we want to stay safe, but we also want to make sure this event happens. So if your work's a little flexible that day, if you want to play a little hooky and hang out with just, did I mention how wonderful the middle school and high school are? They're just wonderful. Uh, I might be selling it too hard. Anyway, if that's somewhere you could help please find me and talk to me. I would be happy to get a number out because we want as many students to be able to come as possible. Now I want to invite all of our younger kids down front for our children's moment. We're in a new spot right over here. Isn't it so rude for Mr. Bill to take our spot with those wonderful handbells? Yeah, couldn't they go somewhere else? What about it, Mr. Bill? So I got to hang out with the third through fifth grade Sunday school class today, and I got to tell one of my favorite stories, and I thought I'd tell it to you. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. Have you ever heard this story before? Jesus was telling this story. Somebody asked him, who is my neighbor? Seems like a simple question, but it really wasn't. So Jesus told a story about a man who had been hurt by some really bad people. You know this one? And he was left on the side of the road. And the first person came, and he was like a priest. And he didn't help the man. And the next person worked at the temple. He didn't help the man. But then a Samaritan came by. And there's, for a lot of different reasons, Jewish people at the time did not like Samaritans. By their own religious law, they weren't even allowed to be in the same house together. I know. But in Jesus' story, a Samaritan comes by, and he helps the Jewish man who has been attacked, who has been hurt. And not only does he help him, he takes him to a place, and he pays for him to stay and for them to treat him. Kind of like a hospital mixed with a hotel, called it an inn. And then he asks the crowd, he asks, or Jesus asks the crowd, who was this man's neighbor? And the person who asked the question said the Samaritan. See, sometimes God puts people in front of us. We see things just so that we can know that we need to help people. We need to be surprised sometimes by God. And sometimes you're going to be going along in your life, and you're going to see something that's amazing, or someone's going to help you, and you're going to feel that love, or you're going to help someone else. You're going to be proud of helping them. And stories like this remind us that when we're surprised, God is there in our surprise, reminding us that everyone is worthy, and everyone is our neighbor. So when we see someone we can help, even if they're different than us or we don't know them, God calls us to help. Now, you guys probably aren't healing anyone on the sides of roads, but I bet there's a lot of people in your lives who could use an encouraging word or a letter or a card or something like that that will remind them how much God loves them and how much we're thinking about them. Can you guys pray with me before we head to worship and wonder? Can you repeat after me while we pray? Say, dear God, thank you for surprising us and for telling us who our neighbor is. Amen. Let's go to worship and wonder.